This video will talk about different dates in Talon. So in general, there are three types of dates in Talon. There's your start date, your end date, and your due date. Um, you'll notice in this cat food module that like this cat food assignment has a due date and an end date. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and add dates to this cat food quiz so I can show you how to do it. So I'm gonna click the arrow next to this quiz and this goes for really any content item. And I can click on edit property in place and add dates and restrictions. And this is gonna come up with my start date, due date, and end date. Now the start date will determine when students will be able to access this cat food quiz. If I do not have a start date on it, they'll be able to click on it and start it really at any time. Um, if I do have a start date on it, the cat food quiz will, they'll be able to see that the cat food quiz exists, but they won't be able to do anything to it. They won't be able to click on it. Uh, so you can add a start date. We'll go ahead and just add a start date for, we'll say, um, yep, 921. That's fine. The due date then is the date that you prefer to have it in by. Uh, just like it sounds, the due date is not at all enforced by Talon. However, if a student does submit after the due date, it will flag it as late for the instructor and show you in bright red that the student submitted it late but it's not enforced by Talon in any way. So it's not gonna stop them from submitting late. It's just gonna tell them that this is the due date. It's more for their own informational purposes. Um, a lot of instructors use due date only instead of the end date, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and the reason being is because if you do have a student that has a legitimate reason to be late, um, then you don't have to reopen it back up for students. Um, if you are more willing to accept late work. And also, like I said, it if a student does submit something late, it will show you how late they were when you go in to grade it. So you'll have an idea of whether you can grade it or not. So a lot of instructors just find that easier. The due dates will always go to the calendar. So we'll make the due date for this, we'll say 929. And then I can also add an end date. Note that got moved to the bottom here. The end date will make it so that after this particular date, it will go back to being like just this dead link again, a link that it's not even a link anymore. So after the end date, it'll go back to being just um, text. Like they won't be able to click on it anymore. They won't be able to access this quiz anymore. Um, so I can set an end date for this and it has to be after that start date or due date. So we'll just set that for the day after. Now, when I go ahead and I update this, I'm gonna see all of my dates here. Uh, due September 29th, starts September 21st, and September 30th. Um, I can go to my calendar now. And we'll note that the, let's see what appeared on the calendar here, the due date and the end date. Note the start date doesn't appear on the calendar, and that's actually by design in order to not um, make the calendar so crowded. The start date generally will not appear on the calendar if you have a due date and end date. If you have a start date only, it will appear on the calendar, but if you have the other dates on it, it will not. So if you do want that start date to appear on the calendar, you're going to have to create your own event manually. So there's a couple different ways to do that. Um, we can go up here to where it says create event, or you can just click on the date. So um, I'm gonna click on the date and we'll say cat quiz is available. And this is go to anyone in the course offering and I can say create. I also have a more option down here if I wanna specify a particular time. So right now this is set to an all day event but I can set this to a particular time. So I'll just say yep, 12 a.m to, um, we'll say to 11.59 p.m. if I want. I can add a reoccurrence, I can add any sort of restriction to it, um, and I can also add content to it. So I could technically tie this to that quiz. So I'll click on create, and it's gonna come up on there. Um, and that goes for any other event you wanna add to the calendar as well. It's really that same process. Now, a couple other things with uh, in terms of dates, those start and end due dates you're gonna find on every content item. Um, and again, the same rules apply for the quizzes as everywhere else. Um, on your under course admin, you're gonna find an option down here called the manage dates function. 
If I click on that, what I will see is I will see a list of all my content items and start an end dates for those items that I've created. So if I want a really nice way to edit all my start and end dates in the course, I can actually select all of these items and click on where it says edit dates and um, edit all these start and end dates at once. But notice this does not include the due date um, at this time. And so if you do want to change the due dates, you're going to have to do that manually from the course content page. Um, a lot of instructors don't use this manage dates page for that exact reason because most instructors use the due dates. If you happen to know exactly how many days off your spring semester was from your fall semester, you can actually choose this option here to offset the dates. And so I can say all my start and end dates forward 236 days and it will automatically adjust all the dates in your course ahead 236 days.